everybody, how's it going? It's Dr. Michael Romanesco. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Megan Conger. Today, we have two special guests with us. We have my brother, Dr. Nick Romanesco, and the creator and founder of Burton Bands, the sectional matrix and wedge system, Dr. Matt Burton, all the way from Illinois. All the way from Illinois. (laughs) Thanks for coming, guys. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. Awesome. So, Matt, we met you at the trade show, the Chicago Midwinter, this past February. Um, It was kind of a funny way that we ended up meeting you because my brother was down there, and he said, you got to come see this guy's booth. He's uh, he's doing these awesome sectional matrixes and these little these little bands. And he said, you got to see it. He's it's awesome. And I was at the end of the trade show journey for myself and I was getting really exhausted. I was like, I don't want to go. And he's like, you got to come. <laughs> so next thing I know, I got over there and I spent a good half hour, 35 minutes, bought a bunch of stuff from you. And then, uh, it sparked a relationship as I was calling you every couple of weeks and being like, how do I do this? And how do I do that? And you were telling me like, what do you think of this? Or what do you think of that? What would you change? So, um, love your product. And one of the things that we wanted to do was kind of highlight the Burton band system and, uh, let all of our IDS members, um, you know, find out about it. Cause that's probably half the battle is getting people, getting this into people's hands and letting them know, you know, there are, there's an alternative out there to what you're using that, uh, is amazing. So, so what was your inspiration behind this? My How did this all get started? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, first of all, thank you again for having me up here. It's a little too close to Green Bay for my liking, but it's okay. <laughs> um, no, it was, I got thrown out of dental school, um, not literally, figuratively, um, and tossed into the world of a transitioning composite amalgam restoration battle, uh, which composites prevailed. And I was known as the composite expert at my office my first day there um, from the other dentist I took over from who didn't do any. And he was just, he just said, yeah, Burton knows how to do this. And and I didn't, I think I had like 12 under my belt when I left dental school, Um, had a lot of learning to do and um, got into it for a few years and started figuring some things out, started using some different rings, different matrix systems with um, decent success. Uh, Materials made a big change. Um, But then there was a constant um, struggle that I ran into of, I was able to do a crown prep faster than a large composite. And I had a few in a row in one week that we all have had those where it's just struggle bus, like two in a row. And I was just like, there's got to be a different way. So I started breaking down what I thought was wrong and what was going on. And that night went home and woke up about four in the morning with this idea of what if there was a wedge that splits in half. And I went down to my kitchen. I still have the piece of paper that I drew it on. I just started sketching it on a piece of paper, um, drew it out, and then went back upstairs and tried to go back to sleep for like an hour. And I was like, no, I need to go down and test this. And then um, just started essentially dumping wedges out at my office that I had and took a a couple of 15 and 12 blades, which my thumb is just all scar tissue at this point from that, (laughs) and chopping things up and just testing it and seeing, you know, how it worked. And I started testing uh, different facets of it and seeing what it gained us. And I remember this one time I tested it. It was on number 30. It was a big one. And I placed it, and I put the ring over the top of this wedge that split. And my assistant even looked at me. Um, This was before N95s and face shields and just kind of gave me that aha look, you know, like she even saw it and was just like, this is it. Um, And so I took it a step further added a sectional matrix to it and just continue to play with it and, and see if I could streamline things a little bit in this highly variable and unpredictable part of our practice that is so important every day and kind of drives the bus. So that's what got me here today. Wow. And what year, what year did you start? What year was that, that dream? The idea, the The dream was, uh, it was on October of 2016. And, um, and it was funny, like I went down to work and, and started just, doing it and I played with it for a couple of months and I was just I never had the intention of taking it to this level or to even showing it to anyone else I just wanted to find a better way to do it and you know just I if I cut wedges in half I cut wedges in half um, and my wife and I she's actually the person to thank for this because we were in New York 
on a like a weekend trip and we were sitting on a roof deck I remember and then she was asking me how things were going to work and I said you know I've come up with this pretty cool thing that's making things a lot easier and you know it's simplifying what I'm doing and she said you have to show this to people you know and that's where that's where it went and um so you have Kristen Burton to thank for this uh, yeah, behind every good product dental right. product there's a good woman that's yes. right that's that right. right that's awesome <laughs> yep. so that was 2016 yes and now it's 2020 2020 so what has the process been over the last four years it's been it's been awesome a um, lot of ups and downs in terms of learning the whole manufacturing side of things and regulatory side of things um, it's been a fascinating learning experience, though, and um, it's a pretty tricky little product to make, as I found most dental devices are at this level because they're very um, thin, small, and precise. And dentistry is a profession that sits in fractions of a millimeter between success and failure, and you have to make something that's better than that. And so it's it's been amazing, and I've learned a lot about it and have a whole new respect for how things are made and um, and all of that, but the journey has been, it's been wonderful. And I feel like in some way it's just kind of getting started right now. So now are you still practicing? I am still yeah. practicing. Yes. Okay. All yep. right. So I'm a, I run a general practice, uh, just South of Chicago and, um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're in it every day. So I'm testing these things and, and in the last four years as well has been a lot of prototyping and angles and thickness and how to get it just right. And, how to get it to not be a headache. So tell, tell everybody before you had this being manufactured professionally, um, tell them how you were making these in your office. I was taking triodent wave wedges and a 15 scalpel blade and cutting them down the middle, which I don't recommend. Don't try it at home. <laughs> um, and then to actually make the, to simulate the Burton bands, I was taking sectional matrix bands and then trimming those to a certain size and sandblasting, the metal along the edge and sandblasting the wedge um, and then super gluing them. Um, and then, um, yeah, just trying them out on Dentex and, and even autoclaving them. And you were charging $800 for a, yeah, a per deal. Filling. That's yeah, right. That's <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that's awesome. That's the passion. Yep. What's, well, one of the reasons I wanted my brother on, well, for one is the one is cause he's the guy that introduced me and, and IDS to you, but also um, Nick, calls me often and he says i had this idea what if we did this and he did that basically he's always out trying to figure out a better way to do something you know when it's dental related and um and the fact that he found dr burton you know it's been interesting to hear the story of all the stuff that he's had to do in order to take it from the idea as like if it was nick the idea in the tree stand all the way to where it is now and all the crazy. But when you because first. I, I have zero patents, by that's the way. Right. That's right. <laughs> They're all in his tree stand yet. But what was the, when you saw it, what was the, because you came, you were super excited when you got me and you're at all the trade shows. You come out and you're like, I found a couple of good things, but you, you found yeah, this me. this one and, I got real you, excited about. Yeah. Tell us, tell us why um, that was. So just walking by, he had a couple monitors running and Dr. Matt was talking to another dentist and. Uh, his sister-in-law, it turns out, was there to help promote the product as well. So I'm just watching the video a little bit, and I'm like a little bit of an aha moment of this is one of the problems I was trying to fix. I always uh, – I didn't like when you have that cusp blowout, you know, say it's number 30, that mesolingual cusp is gone, and the best you can do with your um, standard sectional matrix band is get that <laughs> sweet, like, indent where yes. um, you can see right where that ring sat, and it and – it, Contours It'll be covered up with a crown in a few weeks. Yes. It'll be fine. It'll be covered with <laughs> uh, a crown. So yeah, that I was like, well, this this uh, versus wedge is what ends up being the orange one. Is it's just made perfect sense where it's like this is going to be a game changer for these. It's going to be a piece of cake now. I'd rather do these. Um, and then the other issue I hated with my standard sectional matrix bands was uh, when you get into those either deep preps, you know, you get into the concavities and the root structure, or every stupid. Uh, upper first bicuspid has that nice deep mesial concavity and I'm going to leave a sweet overhang there just so the patient can feel it when they floss. Like yes. it's, it's hard to get those out. And I mean, you can certainly trim their tissue away and polish it as best you can, but 
this just, uh, you could see how it was going to adapt to just with a thinner wedge. I mean, it's, it's real pliable, real easy to get into the concavities, keep that good contour, and then it gives you just the best finish. And um, I mean, all dentists, we're all kind of particular that uh, you always want to do your best work. And it just seemed like this product was going to make my day easier and my work come out perfect. So, yeah, it's awesome. One of the things that we've talked about a lot too over, so Matt and I had a bunch of conversations as I know you did, um, you know, as he's been f- developing this further and further and looking at areas of, uh, you know, that could use improvement or things that would, you know, like, what do we want out of the product? Um, it's, it's been very interesting to see how, I guess, how responsive you've been throughout the process. I, I mean, just the fact that you're in true dentist fashion, never satisfied, always looking to how can, how can I make this better and better and better? And um, I know you brought a bunch of stuff with us. We have a camera set up to kind of show, um, as Matt shows us the the different uh, the different products that he's got, and kind of talk us through you know some of the trouble areas that we all face um, on a regular basis and and how he navigates those. But one of the things that that I really enjoyed was um, just having the conversations about you know it's it's kind of like with operative dentistry, it's one of those things where we do so much of it that I think it's hard for us to say, I need help on these situations because it is like, it's our bread and butter. It's the thing we do all day long. No one has a problem asking for help on an implant case or on a, you know, like a really crazy denture or, but when it gets, when it comes to like our bread and butter people, I think a lot of our colleagues are afraid to say, I don't do this part really well when it's like this. And um, so it's been refreshing to be able to, you know, really focus on the thing that we do a boatload of. Absolutely. And it's, and I've found that when I started to focus more on directs um, instead of treating them with crowns, because crowns are, are fine. They're, they're net, they're needed. They're necessary. There's a time and place, but if that's your whole, you know, if that's, if everything is a crown, then it's also a lot of overhead and a lot of other things that go with it. Um, and to be able to do directs on a level um, that is, satisfying to both you and your patients is so key because that is just such a, a confidence driver in you and it's also a confidence driver your patients and so if something does happen down the line and you know these big fillings that you did that you replaced um, that were bothering them or that they had a bad situation and you solved it in in minutes and you solved it well and you felt good about it and they felt good about it then they're always going to come back um, they're going to have confidence in you for the next level of, you know, treatment and things like that. And I found that focusing on those things really enhanced my everyday practice in terms of um, not feeling like you were on the struggle bus all day. Um, you get a couple of those and, and they, they still happen, right? Where it's like, there's, there's tough cases. Um, but I wanted to develop something. And I think that's why I spent so much time on it. And I'm so receptive is that I wanted to develop something that actually, gave us a chance in some of these spots. And, and I focused a lot on, um, I've tried every ring I've tried it and the rings are great. There's, I, I love rings, Triodent, Garrison, like they're, they're an amazing feature, but, and they also make great matrix bands, but there was this one thing that every time we got to that one step, the wedge step, every time that happened, that's when the wheels would fall off. Right. And you know, you would collapse the matrix band or you couldn't get it sealed and you were trying to double stack wedges and, um, yeah. or double wedge side to side and get it just right. And then you do get it right. And then you put your ring on and you dislodge something. Yeah. And now you're, now you Blows got a bleeding up. papilla. You have a, a wedge with a hole in it or a matrix band with a hole in it. And you got nothing to show for and it. And a right? ring that flew off and is on the ground. Yeah. Right. And you're just like crying. Um, and the patient's looking at you and you're like, it's okay. You know, it's okay, Mrs. Jones. It's all going to be okay. Um, and so I felt like that it was important that this was something that could maybe solve all these things. And, and honestly, when I first had the idea, it was just for um, pretty straightforward, direct cases, like nothing crazy, just like um, doing adjacents and things like that and having the ability to have a wedge that went in both directions coming through the embrasure um, and just simplifying it. And then what I found by accident um, was that it was actually capable of more. And that's where the ring compatibility kind of came in. Um, and the ability to put it over a cuspal involvement case and and give you a chance to just, you know, to simplify it. Um, and the other cool thing about Versa Wedge, too, is that it actually, 
Um, we you said ring slippage, and that that's a cr- uh, like just it happens to all of us. Um, but uh, this versa wedge allows you to kind of and I don't know if Nick or Michael tried it, but um, you're when you slide it over the top of the wedge and then engage the two wings that split, it doesn't want to slide off anymore. You know, it, it seems to like it stabilize hold, it. Holds, yeah. And, um, and so it kind of like nixes those little things. So the original design was for one thing. And then I just started to play with it. And, you know, that's you just have to be just crazy enough to do. Do you, have a, do you have a ring of preference? <laughs> I do. I really like trio dents. Yeah. And, um, pale dent, which is the same design. Um, I do like garrisons as well. Um, but I, I just like trio dents. I think it's very universal and I, I like it. It leaves the matrix band alone. In a lot of places, which yeah. is just my preference, so I find that to be that's my workhorse. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things too, as as you know, I've I've been working on different cases with this product, as I'm sure you have. Um, the mentality of a ring system is a ring system is a ring system that they're all the same. Put the matrix in, wedge it. Put the ring on or ring, then wedge whatever order you do it. Uh, if, if you know how to do one, you know how to do them all. I think that's the wrong approach. And um, I feel like you there is a slight learning curve to, to this. To get the benefits out of it, you need to know what you're doing. And um, I think the uh, approach of your web, you have webinars that you're doing, correct? Yep. We have a webinar coming up this week, actually. The first one is um, August 20th. Um, I'm not sure when this is airing. Um, yeah. We have to backdate it. But um, then there's another one coming up. It just got slotted for September 24th. And so the one that this week is is on focusing on the Versa Wedge and in kind of like, I call it like wedge physics, right? So you guys got a sneak peek at it. I yeah. kind of ran it by you to see, get some notes on it um, and see if you thought I was completely crazy. And um, the response was positive. So. <laughs> Um, and so I focus on, on those little things and just kind of starting to break it down and get people to think about, I guess, to understand why a certain case is harder than others. And, um, it may seem, you know, you may look at something on a bite wing and think it's no problem. And then you get in there and, and you're looking at the clock and you're like, I, I'm never going to get this done on time, or I don't even know how I'm going to get it done. And I think that we all feel blindsided by that at least every once in a while. And some of us more often than not, especially the new practitioners, um, who are just kind of like getting into it and to your point where a ring is a ring, a matrix is a matrix, a class two is a class two. And it's not the case. It's, there's a lot of variables that go into it. It's probably the most variable procedure that we do in the office, um, day to day. And, um, and so just breaking the components of what makes it tricky, what makes one simple, what makes one not simple, um, and how this device kind of helps um, level the playing field a little bit. And then the one on the 24th is, again, uh, to your point where the ring is the ring and matrix is the matrix, um, is kind of focusing on quadrant dentistry a little bit more um, and focusing more on the Burton Bands posterior and essentially like getting a strategy for matrix selection and, um, and knowing you know, how to arm yourself with the right matrix bands, um, ones that are more curved than others, um, because if you do put two that are too curved next to each other and adjacent, then you're battling, your matrix bands are battling each other. Mm-hmm. And so just kind of looking at what the x-ray is telling you, what this, what the, you know, your diagnostics are telling you and how to reproduce that and to be able to do it in an efficient manner without any frustration. So that's awesome. Okay. Show us. Oh, you can't wait. All right. So this, just touch the screen so I can see it. So this is the Versa wedge here, and it's just a wedge that splits in half, okay? And so when you place it in, in between an embrasure like so, and you pop it through, when it comes out the other side, the wings go in opposite directions, which allow it to follow the contours of, of both teeth as it comes through the embrasure. It's like riding a bike. It's like I'm back at the trade show. Yeah. Again, right? <laughs> Sounds so familiar. Um, and so for simplicity reasons, I'll kind of I'll kind of show these without any matrix bands in place because I know it's going to be hard to zoom in on. Um, but there are some videos on uh, the website, BurtonBands.com, that you can also take a look at this. But if you had like an adjacent class two, like so, um, which is can be a pretty tricky situation um, in wedging these because the roots are actually taking two different shapes um, in this embrasure. 
So once you get your matrix bands in place, what I do is place the Versa wedge, and I try to place it in the direction that opens with the embrasure um, to show uh, Dr. Nick and Dr. Mike on the side. So when you place it through, it kind of splits open like that, okay? So it's following, it's following the contour of, of both teeth. Um, and the other cool thing, or one of the key features, I should say, I should stop talking cool things. I love cool things. Do you though, like man. cool things? Uh, yeah. We're going to do cool <laughs> things. <laughs> a cool thing. Key features it's, are are nice. Is that it's ring compatible. All right. So, so important in two adjacents like so is, is matrix stability. And the ring gets you that and gets you the separation you need. Um, and so what you can do is you can just pop it over the top and go right in between the split wings. And I'm just kind of flexing it so you can see how the ring sits right in between those and you just remove it, and what it does is it pulls those wings um, around the sides of both teeth uh, through the embrasure, and that's sealing off your, your gingival margin um, even past the line angle. Um, but another thing that it's doing is it's staying low in the, in the prep space, and that's like a critical feature of, of what I'll talk more on the webinar too, but and touch on it real quick, is that a lot of the wedges that we were using, they have to ride on top of the papilla, and I think it's just a simple thing that we have one that doesn't. And yeah. um, and you just kind of allow the papilla to sit. You let the wedge do its thing. And and they don't have to fight each other. Um, because, you know, as we're taking out more of these aging amalgams and even getting into, you know, those class two lesions, now that we have scopes, we can see a little bit further. And we see that that, that the end of the cavity that we thought was the end of the cavity might not be. And, um and it's hard to kind of follow the guidelines of keep the prep conservative, you know, and, and obviously we all try to do that when we can, but that's not always an option. Right. And so uh, we have to kind of follow it and, and go with it. And um, so that's, um, that's where this is, gives you a lot of value is that it stays low. Um, another case that this is pretty cool. And, and, and Nick was talking about this a few minutes ago is like a cuspal involvement case. And again, I'm just showing you without any matrix bands. So you don't have to, try to look around them but when we try to put a ring on top of that with a regular wedge it just it just collapses it and you get the little dent um, but with this it's a little bit different again you go over the top of the of the split wing like so and when you engage it on the lingual what it's doing is it's actually putting pressure on the on the wing of the wedge which is putting pressure on the tooth itself and so it doesn't allow the the matrix to to get kinked or dislodged or smashed into the prep, um, and it's a it's a really cool feature in doing um, um, in doing cuspal involvement cases um, to a T and making them super efficient and and making them nice um, and and getting the most out of it for the patient. So awesome! Very cool. Show us what the uh, what else can you do with that Versa wedge? There's a couple other things that are so you are you're like you're on top of this. I should just I love you, the Versa. I I, you, you need to put it. the Versa wedge on a T-shirt and I will buy it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is kind of a cool color, right? like <laughs> a black tee. So there's a second wedge to this um, to this device. You know what? I'll just use the purple one. So there's there's a second wedge for all of these all these components that you get, and what the second wedge is designed to do is make sure the camera's on. Is it's made to slide right in between the wings of the first wedge. So if there is a case where you end up with a with an open gingival margin, then the second wedge is made to glide in between. Um, the wings of that split wedge to seal um, to seal that gingival margin. So, for example, if you had a case on a premolar here, um, then you can pop this in, and then you take the second wedge, which is also interchangeable. So you can you can actually put it in either right side up or upside down, depending on uh, the size of the embrasure. So you don't have to grab more wedges, which is also something that we don't want to have to do all the time. Um, but this is only needed when you have a, like an open margin because um, Mike was testing some out this week and in realizing that with the Burton Bands posterior, you don't need this very often. And I don't need it very often, but it's here. 
and you can take it and just you can actually just press it into place and it'll actually just click into place like so and there's a little notch on the outside of the the orange wedge and these are purple but they're normally orange um, and they actually interlock with one another and that'll help uh, create a tight seal in a, in an area if you had like a marginal gap with a weird uh, contour on the tooth um, that you weren't able to completely close um, but that can do it um, largely i use um, the ring to do that right so the ring is doing the same thing that the second wedge is doing so if you're right. using a ring on top of it then that ring's actually pulling that you know, that wing around. Um, but it's a cool little feature, especially in the mesial bicuspid area, which can be, which can be daunting. Um, and if you run into trouble on it, um, if it doesn't close it all the way, what I do is just take everything out and put it in from the other direction. Cause almost every time it works from one direction or turning the, turning the Versa wedge. Yeah. Around, just flipping it around. So from the other if side. you inserted it from the palatal then, or from the buckle, then try to take it out and insert it from the palatal. And it's a quick, it's a quick switch. You know, you just take yeah. it out, put it right back in. Um, and that's the other cool thing about this is there's really no, there's not much of a learning curve to the Versa wedge. I, I don't think I would like to hear what you guys think. Um, but, um, the Versa wedge is, is, is a pretty simple transition, I think to it's, it's just a wedge, right? It's just switching things up. Um, and it's, um, and it's, I try to make it as easy as possible to use. That is the training wheels to enter into the Burton system. That's right. It's an easy, I love, I, that was the first thing that I had tremendous success with. And I don't know about you, but that was the first thing that I was able to use. Yeah. That was, uh, kind of my go-to anytime you're using something new, it's baby steps. And this was just kind of a no brainer. It's, it's thin. So it gets into all the tight interproximal contacts and, um, and you, preserve the papilla i mean just the tissue looks so much better when you're done with it and um that was definitely what i used the most of when i first got your kit and then it would be baby steps from that into your posterior bands and everything too but that's that's the workhorse as you get gutsier you try to you try to that's experiment right. more i just i just <laughs> yeah. see how crazy and gutsy you get right <laughs> Yeah, um, so take us to the next. Take us to the next right, step. Then, so the after after you graduate from the Versa Wedge and Force Wedge combo, so after you learn how to use these on Monday, then on That's Tuesday, right. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to. I'm going to steal this yep. one from you. Um, you can go to the um, the next device, which is it is that Versa Wedge with a sectional matrix um, attached to it, and so for uh, select cases. Um, not adjacents, definitely not adjacents. Um, quadrant dentistry where you have back to back to back to backs, use the Versa wedge with your matrix bands. It's going to change the way that it goes for you. But for if you had a couple of MOs um, or a couple of DOs that are neighbors, um, then this is a great device um, to be able to use. And so what you do is just very similar. If anyone's ever used a, a similar product, um, where they had a, a sectional matrix attached to it and any, you know, a lateral insertion, a wedge to a matrix, um, then this is the same thing. You just kind of, you take it in or the same concept to use, but you just press it from either the buckle or the palatal and you just press it into place like so. And what it's doing is giving you all those benefits of the, um, of the split wedge. So you're still getting, you're allowing the matrix band and the wedge to follow the contours of the tooth. Um, but it's also attached to a dentist designed matrix band. So uh, one of the things that I found was kind of a uh, hit or miss was my marginal ridge and my, ins my occlusal embrasure, uh, which I felt like um, a lot of us would get like some flat contacts um, or flat embrasures or flat anatomy, which is a flossing problem, right? So that's where you shred floss and things like that. And what this does is it, it, um, it kind of forms all that for you. So once it's in place, um, you can, you can place your restoration just as with a cavity this size, you can actually just burnish and, and place the, and place the composite and, and you'll be good to go. So, um, that's one component. The other idea is that if you don't trust me on the contact, <laughs> which dentists typically don't, then it's ring compatible as well. So you can just take it right over the top and place your ring in between the splits of that wedge again. And then what you've done here is you've just, you've taken out the, the steps of having to place a matrix, place a wedge, place a ring. 
instead of just doing it in one in one motion and then placing the ring on top. And one area that I found that the two devices work extremely well together is in a case like this, um, where you have a, a, a pretty obvious issue, right? You have the cuspal involvement. So we know we're solving that back issue with a, with a matrix and a ring. Um, but you also had a mesial component when you were opening it up or there was an old amalgam there and you're thinking, I'm just going to, we're just going to fix this tooth from, from top to bottom. Um, and one thing that I find to be kind of cumbersome is when you end up wrapping matrix bands around the same tooth, especially mm -hmm. premolars, because everything starts to interfere, um, on that side, you know, on the, on the buckle and the, and the palatal walls. Um, and so what you can do is you can take one of the Burton bands posteriors on your mesial component, which is a more conservative component and place that as your matrix. Okay. Then you do your standard sectional on your distal with your Versa wedge. And you don't have to worry about your two, um, your two matrix bands fighting each other here on this side. So then you place the ring on the distal and then finish your distal. And if you feel confident in this and it wasn't that big and you finally trust me for getting a contact, then you can restore <laughs> it as is. Or you can just take the ring, lift it off there, put it on that and finish up your mesial. And it just, it really streamlined things. Um, and I designed this matrix to try to minimize cleanup. Um, and that's kind of how, that's the moral of the story with all of these, with these wedges that split is that it's, it's kind of doing some work for us in an area that is really impossible to reach. If you don't get it right from the beginning, then it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a tough, tough hill to climb at the end. And so this wedge is able to kind of seal some edges and create some contours for us in areas that we historically wouldn't have much control over um, unless you were doing like multi-step fillings, which is right. what I was doing for uh, a while, too. you know, and on these cuspal blowouts, I mean, I would put um, anything I could get a gingival seal on and just create a base and then take that off and sometimes reprep and re then put yep. a sectional yep. on it and then yep. rebuild it. Um, and, and that's fine and it works, but it's, that's a lot of, it's a lot of time. You're doing you know? the, you're doing the tooth twice. You're I mean, doing the tooth twice. Yep. That's why you charge eight hundred dollars. That's filling. eight hundred. That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> I don't charge eight hundred dollars. <laughs> promise. That was uh, one thing I noticed using your sectional and wedge combo is the cleanup and the margin. Um, it gives it its natural contour back, and we're all guilty of leaving those nice flat ones. Um, which you're right, especially in the day of those placards, you know, the floss sticks. I it hurts whenever I go down. It's like well. Do it gent more gently. Yeah. Uh, no, this it's this your fault. Sk yeah. Skip that one. Yeah. <laughs> I close that contact. Now you don't have to like floss. Um, but no, it just gives uh, minimal cl the time saving of only in inserting one instrument instead of two. The time saving not having the band blow up and off the tooth is huge, and then the time saving of cleanup and, like I said, keeping the tissue happier and healthier. It's been. That's been like the huge plus. It it saves time, saves cleanup, gives you a prettier outcome in the end. Uh, um, you don't have the uh, the tab on the top that I like to grab and rip before I end up getting the matrix out. Why did you Why did you decide to not put that piece on that doesn't work? So, <laughs> I just I wanted to reproduce. <laughs> I wanted to make it feel like home, right? <laughs> um, no, but I shortened. There is a tab on the top to get these out. Um, if they do, you know, dislodge when you, when they come off, um, cause everything's kind of fitting together by fractions, by fractions of a millimeter, you know, it's thousands of an inch. And, um, if you do get a tight contact, which you will, um, if you get a really tight one, if you put a ring on it, you may notice that those, that the metal bands will separate. So I kept the tab on top to try to help, to try to help grab that. Um, um, but I also wanted to keep the working field clear, uh, cause I found that that was a, one of my biggest struggles is on like the mesial of a second molar maxillary and or mandibular typically, but trying to reach back there and see um, is very difficult. And when you're placing your composite in the deeper boxes and that patient just can't open quite and you, you just can't get the right angle to like get back there. And I found that I was trimming um, a lot of uh, the sectionals that I was using before 
by hand first just to like be able to get in the working field so I can see. So I kept the tab profile low on that to, to kind of aid in that as well while being able to keep the tab up. That low profile has definitely helped me set my height of my marginal, marginal ridge so I knew where that was going to end up. Because a lot of times you don't know. You have an idea, and then you don't know until you take everything off, and then you're like, oh, here's where it landed. Um, this has been a lot easier for me to put it right where I want it to go. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed that. The uh, talk, about some, talk about some of the ways to remove the, uh, the matrix if it does get separated from Absolutely. the Absolutely. So I forgot. I don't think I brought any cotton pliers today but or tweezers. Let's pretend you have one. I'll pretend we have one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the handle design on these is made to, to just be able to grab with any, any cotton pliers. So, um, I try to minimize the amount of special instruments needed because we all don't like that. Um, some of us do, I shouldn't generalize, but, um, but anyway, when you go to take it out, what you can do is just take an instrument, um, after the after everything's cured and kind of pop the matrix free which is an important step because our bonding agents these days are pretty good and um even if you have a coated um teflon matrix you know like you'll still you'll still feel that pop when you take it off and so you just pop it free just take a second with an explorer and kind of free all the margins and then when you grasp it on the outside you can kind of start to wiggle and if you if you get a lot of force then what i do is I'll actually take my cotton pliers and move past the handle and grasp right around where there's a there's a little peg down here that's holding the metal band on and you can pinch it at that point and then you're grabbing the the matrix and the wedge mm -hmm. and then kind of like roll it out like you can tuna can it or or um, just kind of use an up and down motion to get it out and um, and that can be helpful but the key the key point is uh, is freeing it up before you before you try to remove it because there's a lot of force in between there after the fillings in there's you know it's the pressure of the ligament on the tooth and then that that little matrix is in there just kind of you know in no man's land and so sometimes it takes a little bit of teasing to get out and I know that we've talked about that in the past um, in terms of techniques to get it out um, but, um, if you, if you grasp just past the handle and get the metal and the, and the plastic, and then kind of like roll it out and take it out in that one motion, uh, that can be helpful. If it does debond, then you can grab it with a pair of cotton pliers and, you know, roll it out. Yeah. I've used the hemostat to great yeah. success by grabbing a hold of that. And yeah. Um, show us the, uh, show us the anterior. So we're running low on time. Do you, you have, have the anterior? I didn't bring any anteriors. Oh. What? We'll have to have you back then because well, that is yes. that's one of my favorite things actually. The contours on them. Without show, perfect. you know what? Um, well, this is what we'll do for the video. I'll I'll grab the the animation of your anterior. Yeah, and I'll I'll put that up while while you talk about it. Awesome. Okay, so what the anterior is is a is a solid body wedge um, attached to a vertical matrix. And so for class three cases like so, um, it's, it's a simple insert um, from the buckle and you can just place it in and the, and the wedges um, will engage and kind of like move the papilla out of the way. Um, and the matrix um, is a vertical curved matrix and it's made to just kind of create your barrier for you in your embrasure space. And it allows you to have 360 view um, I shouldn't say 360. It's like more like uh, 270. 270, yeah. there you go. <laughs> 270 view of the prep and you'll be able to get access to it because that's what I found to be a struggle with anything that gets too contoured in the anterior. It, it totally boxes us out of being able to get our bonding agents or filling materials. Um, and, and it's, and it's, it's hard. And so I just found that if we had something that was a barrier, um, just creating that really hard area to create, which is the you know, that, that axial wall and that embrasure, if you're able to create that, then you can shape things however you want and, and trim it pretty, you know, pretty easily and fluidly. Um, but yeah, the video that, um, Dr. Michael put up, will uh, will show that and demonstrate that it's a very straightforward product to use. It's super, it's super simple. It's awesome. I do find myself grabbing the second wedge a lot with the anteriors. Do you tend to use them quite often? Yes. Yeah. In that case, you're talking so about the force wedge. Yeah, you yep. can use uh, Force Wedge, or we're actually renaming it to Wedge 2. Oh, I like that, yeah. too. So the reason Although I do is, like is the Jedi we don't um, <laughs> element to the Force Wedge. Well, uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, but Wedge 2, we didn't want it to be a, um, 
because people heard Forest Wedge and they felt like they had to like jam yeah. this thing in oh, there. Oh, for sure. And so you yeah. would have this beautiful restoration ready to go here. And then you just take a Forest Wedge and you're just like shoving it in. It's like, don't do that. <laughs> um, so Wedge 2, you can actually use with the anteriors as well. So if you had a larger embrasure, um, like so, and the first one went in and, and you didn't quite have the adaptation, gingival margin, then you can just take Wedge 2 from the other direction and slide it right next to it and slide it into place, and then that'll kind of, like, lock them in, um, and then you're free to free to work. Cool. Awesome. Well, Matt, thank you so much for coming here, making the yes. drive, Absolutely. and uh, sharing your fantastic product with us. Nick, thanks for pr- in introducing me to Matt and <laughs> yeah. his product. That worked out. <laughs> worked out great. Um, so where can people uh, where can people find you, learn about you, learn about your product, get your product? Absolutely. Uh, the website is burtonbands.com. Um, Burton, like the snowboard, bands.com. Um, and we are, um, um, everything is available and uh, ready to ship out. And um, yeah, you can you can come visit us. And if you have any questions, you can reach out. And um, we're also being distributed by um, Young Innovations or Plaque Smacker. And um, they're the ones that are sponsoring the webinar and that uh, we've partnered with in the uh, in the recent past to, uh, to help take this thing to the next level. So they've been great to work with and um, looking forward to what it brings. Awesome. Congratulations to you, man. You're, yes. a, you're a pretty special guy mm-hmm. and I uh, wish you nothing but success and looking forward to seeing this thing take off. Well, I appreciate you having me and you guys are special guys too. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks a lot, buddy.